When uh, the Nazis started burning synagogues, uh, Bonhoeffer referred to these as the burning of God's houses. Yes. Um, big leap, a big leap for a German theologian, especially a Lutheran, to say that the Jews are the people of God. Bonhoeffer was really, talk about a prophetic voice. Yeah, really, and, and not, not all Christians agreed with him. No, no, no. In fact, many uh, of his uh, allies in the Confessing Church didn't agree with him. He went way out on a limb. I mean, this is where, you know, he got this from his father, as I say, to think with great rigorousness, not to just accept what other Christians are saying, but to really think it through biblically, theologically. And his conclusion was that the persecution of the Jews was a persecution of God, yeah. that the people of God were being persecuted. I mean, it, w it was something he, w I, I write about this in depth in the book because th this hasn't been written much before. I mean, there's been a lot written about Bonhoeffer, but I wanted to put this all in one book because I think a lot of this story is unknown. And um, it's very, very important understanding who he was, that he was standing up specifically for the Jews because of his Christian faith. It's, it's really, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, really. Now, as the book progresses, and it is a long book, but man, it's a page turner. I, I, I turned every page. Can I quote you on that? Uh, absolutely. It's quote a me page on, turner? It's a page turner. It is. For me, it was a page turner. Thank uh, you. It, for yeah. me, it no, was. No, people keep saying that. I have to say, as an author, that's the greatest compliment I can see, get. See, I, I, I pastored right? and lived in I, Israel for seven years, so I, I have real sensitivity to this whole issue. My kids grew up in Israeli schools, and uh, when we went to Berlin before the fall of the wall and went into the... Uh, Nazi Museum in the old Reichstag building, uh, my kids came out in tears. They, they had to go to every exhibit. They spent three hours in there. Uh, so it means a lot to me, uh, what you've said here. But a lot of his generals, they, they saw the writing on the wall and they were very concerned. A lot, a lot of them were committed believers and they, 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 were, they were nationalists, they were committed to yeah. Germany. Yeah. Uh, and like so many others, saw Hitler as a bit of a messianic figure, but as time went on, they saw him as becoming an evil despot. Uh, Very few people understand this, that there were many Germans who, uh, at the end, were conspiring against Hitler. They were I, I tell that whole story because I think it's such a fascinating story. Yeah, they, just, they, uh, actually some of the generals were conspiring. There was an attempt to blow them up. Uh, se several attempts. Yeah, and, and, and I actually tell all those stories. I tell, those, the, I tell the Valkyrie story, yeah. which some people saw that movie, but I tell that whole story in here because it's very important to the story of Bonhoeffer. But, but Exactly. And, and we've got about five minutes left. How was it uh, that Bonhoeffer got drawn into this conspiracy? Well, um, he was fighting and fighting on all these different different levels within the church. He was he started a, a, an illegal seminary to train up pastors and all that. It's 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 amazing. But but as time passed, his options began to shut down. The Nazis became more and more powerful. We forget they they didn't have total power in the beginning. But as every month passed, they got more and more power. And Bonhoeffer and any serious Christian was really being boxed out. That that uh, eventually he was forbidden from writing. He couldn't publish anymore. He wrote a book on the Psalms, Old Testament, about the Jews and the Jews' scriptures. Oh, you can't do that Nazi Germany. So he, he couldn't publish. He was forbidden from uh, teaching and speaking publicly. So eventually the war comes and, and he thinks, well, what, what do I do now? And he decides to go back to America. He went to America in 30 and 31, as we said uh, yesterday. But he decides to go back to America to, to escape this, this chaos and to, maybe to teach. Uh, gets on the boat and already knows something's wrong and he knew and he was praying and I, and I for the first time ever really tell this story fully because people want to know why did he go back I, 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 I quote from his journals he was going through a process of trying to hear from God directly what do you want me to do and he felt that God was calling him to go back to Germany to face this time with his people so he goes back to Germany everybody's shocked that he's come back because they pulled all kinds of strings to get him out of there he comes back what does he do well his brother-in-law was one of the leaders of German military intelligence and German military intelligence was one of these centers of the conspiracy against Adolf Hitler we forget that there were many people you know in the Third Reich mm -hmm. who were secretly conspiring to kill Hitler to get rid of Hitler whatever to get rid of the Nazis Bonhoeffer felt led by God, and this is important, I go into this in depth in the book because we have to understand how he got there. He felt that God was leading him to get involved in the conspiracy officially against Adolf Hitler. So his brother-in-law hires him, now the war starts, and his brother-in-law hires him as a member of German military intelligence. So on the surface of it, he's serving the Third Reich. He doesn't have to pick up a gun, but he's serving the Third Reich. But what he's really doing is he's traveling around Europe. He had all these ecumenical contacts, Christian circles throughout Europe. So he's doing this ostensibly to help the uh, German military intelligence. But what the leaders of German military intelligence knew and what Bonhoeffer knew is that he's really doing this to establish ties with the Churchill government, with other governments, the allies, 
to let them know there are a group of Germans inside Germany working to end the Nazi regime. Uh, that's really what Bonhoeffer's role was in the conspiracy. Um, he was eventually arrested in 1943. He was arrested for a plot to get seven Jews out of Germany into neutral Switzerland. That's how the Gestapo finally caught up with these conspirators. So he's put in prison, but he really thought that he would sort of beat the rap. There was still some semblance of legality. We forget that that's why you need to read the story, because you almost can't believe that. So they had court systems, and mm. they didn't just kill him. But uh, in 1944, the Valkyrie plot to, to blow up Hitler goes awry. Hitler is not killed. And for the first time in all these years, this conspiracy against him is exposed. And all of these generals and leaders in, in German military intelligence who were involved in this plot, their names come up. Bonhoeffer is, of course, already behind bars. He's now transferred to the dreaded Gestapo prison on Prince Albrechtstrasse. Uh, it's really, from, from that point on, his days are numbered. And it wasn't until uh, April of 45 that he was hanged um, by the Nazis, but it was directly for his role in the plot against Hitler. Mm. Uh, our time is pretty much gone. Just um, a final, final question from me. And I, man, I, I, I have so many questions. Um, how, did, how did the study of Bonhoeffer's life impact Eric Metaxas? How, how have you changed because yeah. of this, this incredible work you've just done here? There's just no question in my mind, and this is part of Bonhoeffer's theology, that to be a person of faith is to, to learn from other human beings, not just to learn from reading rules, because Christianity is not a religion of rules. It's about a person. Jesus is a person. To Bonhoeffer, this idea of the incarnation is very important. We learn from people. The disciples learned from Jesus. He didn't hand them you know, a list of rules and say, follow these rules and I'm going back to heaven. I'm tired. He said, I'm going to live among you. To read the life of Bonhoeffer, to me, is a similar experience where you learn what is it to be a Christian in this world through reading about the life, the actual life of this human being. That's why I think this biography is important. I want people to read Bonhoeffer, to read his theology, but his life is his theology. Mm -hmm. And I believe that Bonhoeffer teaches that your life is your theology. You, uh, don't tell me what you believe. Show, Show me, me in your life. So to spend the time that I did with this man, there's just no question. It, it changed my life. It changed my walk with God. And my hope and my prayer is that when people read this book, it will draw them closer to Jesus Christ. And I think that's inevitable. And I think that even people who read this who are not Christians, you're going to see a Christian you never thought existed. This is the guy who, um, anybody who hasn't given Christianity a try, if, if you read about the life of Bonhoeffer, it changes your whole view of what it is to be a Christian. I mean, his standing up for the Jews, his integrity all the way to the bottom. I mean, I really think that you can't help but be changed by it. But that is my, that's my hope and my prayer. So thank well, you for having I think you've accomplished me. it. Certainly in terms of my reading it, it's had a huge impact on me. Thanks for coming our way, Eric. My great pleasure. Thank the you. The book is called Bonhoeffer, Pastor, Martyr, Prophet, Spy, published by Thomas Nelson. This is a book well worth the read.